Good morning, and hope everybody had a great weekend and is enjoying your Martin Luther King Day. Uh, this is your first flip video for the digital citizenship class, and we are live in my dining room right now. Um, wanted to give you just a quick introduction to how we run flip videos in this classroom. Um, Ultimately, the goal of a flip video is to either offload lecture so that you have more time in class to do an assignment or to work on something, or as in this case, when I'm out of the building, this gives you a chance to know what I'm expecting and things that I'm looking for. So we're going to use this particular flip video to go over the concepts that we didn't get covered last week because of two shortened schedules. So a few ground rules about the flip videos. Um, my goal is to keep these short and focused so that we're not wasting time, either your time at home or time in class that you could be using um, to get to work. I want you to be willing to go back and re-watch the video. Um, if you wanna try something that we're showing on there on your computer, go ahead and feel free to pause it and then come back to the video. You're in control of the feed. And then finally, um, We'll keep all of these videos on the classroom feed as well as my YouTube channel so that you can refer back to them over time in case you want to try new techniques or review something that we've been saying. Um, without further ado, uh, we began working with Google Calendar. And one of the things that we said about Google Calendar, particularly at Verbuff, was down here along the left hand side, you have a number of calendars that you can choose from, whether it's the calendar of somebody who is. Um, one of your friends or somebody who um, you are working with. And by typing their name into the calendar, you're able to see their calendar. One of the calendars that we discussed was the master calendar. So if you type in master, um, that will bring up BJPS master calendar. And on my screen, those are the gray boxes. Once you've chosen a calendar, you can change the color of that calendar by clicking on the three dots along the left hand side and choosing the color. For things that are regular um, reference, I recommend using some muted colors and then brighter colors for things that are going to actually apply to you, such as your calendar, your appointments, um, or even your classrooms. Notice that you should already have one on there that's digital citizenship home base. That's our Google Classroom calendar, and all of your classes should have. Um, a classroom. If you are interested in making a calendar item, you click up here in the upper left hand corner where it says create. And then I almost always immediately click on more options. This gives you the example or this gives you the ability to add an example calendar item to set the date to set the time. If this is something that you do regularly, like a practice that you want to make sure is in your calendar at all times, you can add repetitions to it. You can choose the location. You can add video conferencing to it, but generally speaking, you won't need to. And then I think the notification is one of the most important pieces because it will add a notification to um, both your phone if you have the Google Calendar app on your phone, um, and it can even email you notifications. You can add any details that you want in here. And then over on the right-hand side is where we discussed adding guests to a calendar item or adding rooms, the most common rooms that you would choose are the Info Commons collaboration rooms, since those are the rooms that allow you to reserve those small rooms in the information commons. So that was calendar items that we had discussed. Along the right hand side of the calendar, you'll see these two tabs here, they're the default tabs. One is Google Keep, and one is tasks. And the one that we showed in, ta in class was tasks. The idea behind tasks is that it opens up this window in your Google Calendar. That same window can also be opened up in your Gmail. And it gives you the ability to make your to-do list or the things that you want to keep track of. So I'm going to flip back over to my calendar and I'm going to add a task. And the task that I'm going to add is check in for Boston flight, which is something that I need to do today. As soon as I hit enter, that's locked in. If I click the pencil icon, I can add details. I know that it's a Delta flight. 
I can add a date, I need to check in today, and I can add any subtasks. Once I have added that, you'll notice that because I have a date listed, that date gets put into my calendar. And then as I complete those task items, they get checked off. And so that will be your goal. So we've now completed the calendar walkthrough and we've talked a little bit about tasks. I'm not gonna check that off yet though. So that's calendar items and tasks. Now, some people prefer to use Google Keep. Google Keep is at keep.google.com and it is another task management system. It's a little bit more robust. It's very self-contained within Keep. But one of the types of notes that you can take is a checkbox note. So you can put something like a grocery list or today's to-do list and you can start listing items in the same way that you do with the tasks. The difference, the main difference with Google Keep is Google Keep does not show up in your calendar. So if you get used to using your calendar, it's not going to have those reminders there, but you can set reminders for your to-do lists. So if you were to take a note that was, tell my mom how awesome the sit is, you can set a reminder to do that later today, to do that tomorrow, to do that next week. You can pick your time and date. You can even have it send that reminder to you or give you that reminder um, based on your location. So this is really good if you need like, remember to pick something up from home or remember to get that book from school. You can do your reminder by location. So to review, calendar items are good for making appointments, good for scheduling meetings with other people. The task list within calendar is along the side on the right hand side. So to review, we use Google Calendar, another calendaring app to answer the question, how do you know where you're supposed to be? We want it to be able to set appointments and reminders. We want to be able to invite guests to the same meeting or video conference with just an email address. We want to be able to choose rooms or at least set locations so that we know where it's going to be and how long it takes to get there. And then we want to be able to send reminders. In order to answer the question of how do you know what you have to do, we want to use some kind of task list. The ones that we reviewed are Google Tasks and Google Keep. Both of them allow you to set a reminder, although they set the reminders in different locations, and both have a checklist format that feels really good when you get it checked off. Now let's talk about note taking. Remember when it comes to note taking, we're looking to answer that question, how do you remember what you've already learned? And based on your feedback from the Pull Anywhere exercise that we did, plus the conversations that we've had, we know that there are certain things we want our notes to be able to do. We want to be able to find the notes when we need them. We want to be able to keep track of a variety of different notes, whether it's notes that we've taken by hand or web pages that we've been looking at for a research paper or notes that we've typed or and even voice notes or pictures that we've taken. We wanna be able to search those notes for important words so that we can find those notes and the specific note that we need quickly. And ultimately we would like to be able to share those notes because it's useful that we can share our notes with other people who have been in the class or with the teacher if they request them. So that being said, I wanna introduce two types of notes to you and some of the features of both of them. We're gonna start with Google Keep. Google Keep, we talked about the other day, and it is both a web-based and a phone-based app that allows you to take quick notes. In fact, it was originally meant to do quick notes and checklists, and it's expanded a little bit from there, but it's still very simple to take quick notes. And so you, when you click on a Google Keep, um, again, I'm at keep.google.com, you type in your title of your note, um, this could be the class that you're in or the unit that you're covering, um, specific pages that you're covering, something to help you keep the note organized by title. After that, you're going to take whatever your note is. Note, it's very easy to type in Google Keep. 
And then you have some options such as setting reminders, sharing the note immediately with somebody, changing the color of the note so that you can keep track of your different notes by color, inserting a picture, archiving notes so that they don't show up on your main screen anymore. You can also add labels, add drawings, show checkboxes, and copy your notes into Google Docs. So Google Keep is kind of the very quick and easy way to take a fast note. In fact, you'll notice that most of the notes that I take in Google Keep tend to be fast notes um, that I'm trying to remember some specific piece of information. For more detailed note taking, a number of people use a program called Evernote. Now, Evernote is one of many web-based note taking um, applications, and I'm not going to advocate one over another one other than to say that I've used Evernote for a number of years, and when I keep coming back to Evernote, it has a lot of new features included in it, and a lot of them are useful. Um, that's not to say other ones aren't useful, it's just not the ones that I've used. So whatever note-taking application you use, um, just using the application is the important thing. So to get started, when you log into Evernote, it's a free login. There's a free and a paid version with a lot of these apps. The free version will allow you to take a new note. You can organize the notes, much like um, those of you who have used OneNote, so you can have multiple notebooks. You can give your note a title, so we could have an entire notebook um, on DigCit or a note on dig, um, digital citizenship. And then from here, you can immediately start writing or you can drag files, including pictures or PDFs or OneNote files into the note itself. You can also use templates. And I've been getting a lot of use out of the templates um, because it gives you a quick way to input the most common kinds of notes that you would need to say that include how to keep track of group work and individual projects and meeting notes, which could be very useful for like class projects because it tells you what the task is and who is responsible for it, what decisions were made at the meeting, and then any summary or takeaways. And then has checklists for did you distribute the notes? Did you complete the tasks? Do you know what date things are due? So the template feature is one of those parts of Evernote that I think is um, incredibly powerful. The second thing that you can do with Evernote that is not necessarily something you can do with all note-taking applications is if you were doing research, there is a Chrome Web app. Now, for those of you who haven't used Chrome Web apps, if you open up Chrome and you go to Chrome Web Store in Google, it'll bring up an entire store that has different add-ons that you can put into your Chrome browser. And one of the add-ons that you can put in is called Evernote. The Evernote Web Clipper is what I've installed. And when you install the Evernote Web Clipper, you will get this elephant icon up at the top in your Chrome browser. It gives you the ability to quickly capture web pages as you're doing research um, without constantly um, copying and pasting over to Evernote. And I'll give you an example. And if you click through any of these links, you get all sorts of different points of views and different perspectives on this. And so as I look at this New York Times article and I read it, I'm going, okay, this is an article that I want to read for later or that I want to keep for my notes. I clip on my Evernote clipper and it says, you can save this clip and I can save the entire article or a simplified version of the article that's just going to strip the text out of it, the entire web page, I can bookmark it to come back to it later, or I can just take the screenshot if all I need is like the title or just a single picture out of it. And so for this one, I'm going to clip just the article. I'm going to save it into JD's notebook. I'm going to add a tag of DigSit, and I'm going to add a tag of social media and I'm going to add a tag of activism. And tags are things that I can use to look later on. And this is post one day includes deeper analysis 
of the full video. So those are my notes to keep track of. And then I hit save clip. If we clip, flip over to my notes, there's the clip that I made. It includes pictures, it includes the artist. And then here are my tags down here so that the more Digsit articles I have, I could quickly just look up all of my Digsit articles. So when you combine Web Clipper, the Chrome extension with the Evernote app, you get the ability to quickly do web research, to add your notes, and to not lose track of your sources, which is important at the end of the research paper. Uh, that concludes our overview of the calendar items that we covered, the task list that we had covered last week, and then some of the new note-taking tools that I wanted to introduce to you and show to you. At this point, I'm going to turn you back to our Google Classroom page where your reflection and assignment will be posted. Uh, thank you very much, and I will see you all on Thursday.